As a quick precursor to this episode, I would love to invite you to attend the autumn edition of my in-person event, Dare Greatly in the Coaching Arena, which will be held on Friday the 8th of November in Barnes, Southwest London. It's five minute walk from Barnes Station and there's also a free car parking place on site. So it's the best of both worlds. We will be preparing and planning for your best ever 2025 and you will leave with that vision and strategy for your next 12 months with a newfound sense of connection and focus. We will be harvesting your presence and planting the seeds for a profitable and joyful 2025, allowing your business goals to bloom with ease. I'm very excited to be bringing the warmth of the season and all of those beautiful colors and everything we can learn from shedding what no longer serves us and preparing for spring. Embrace the seasons of change and join me on 8th of November to dare greatly in the coaching arena. Do not worry if you don't know anyone. I will ensure that you feel welcome from the moment you arrive until the moment you leave. I cannot wait to see you there and grab the link now in the show notes. Hello and welcome to Women in the Coaching Arena podcast. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Jo Lott, a business mentor and ICF accredited coach, and I'm on a mission to help brilliant coaches build brilliant coaching businesses. In this podcast, I'll be sharing honest, not hype, practical and emotional tools to support you to make the difference that you're here for. Welcome to episode 11 of Women in the Coaching Arena podcast. I'm so glad you're here. Today, our topic is why you aren't taking action and how to handle your feelings and emotions so you get to fulfill your potential in your coaching business and in your life. So this episode has been inspired by many calls and emails I've had this week from people who have been waiting for years to get moving in their business. They want to save money and instead they waste time and then it's really easy to get frozen into inaction and lose so much confidence. So you may have all these ideas and dreams that you want to pursue But sometimes, no matter how much you try, you just can't find the motivation to take action and make a decision. So you might ask yourself, why do I seem to go around in circles? And what I know is that there are countless ways to build your business and each of them requires you to step into the arena and try. And that is the hard part. And that's why I love Brené Brown's quote so much about if you're not in the arena, I am not interested in your feedback. And it's so brilliant because I think you will never find anyone who is working harder than you criticize you. So you will only find those who are frozen into inaction and outside the arena who will ever say anything negative about you. So if you're in the arena, you have a shot and it is all possible. So It feels impossible many times, especially when you're on your own, which is why it's so important to find your tribe of people who remind you it's possible when you have forgotten. So when I started my business, I was petrified of everything. It took me at least four months to gather the courage to post on social media about what I was doing, to tell my friends and family was the most horrific thing I felt I ever did. And the more you can manage to force yourself through that comfort zone into that growth zone, then you will start to be able to really effectively build your business. And what needs to really happen, therefore, is that inner work and taking action combined. So I have spent a lot of money and a lot of time doing that inner work with coaches because you can know everything there is to do to build your business, but there's a deeper emotional and embodied reason why you may not be taking action. So it's not always something that we can think our way out of. It's a pattern stored in the body that is trying to keep us safe. So with small courageous steps and consistently facing our fears, we can become more courageous as well as really identifying and naming those patterns when they come up. 
So if you are waiting for clarity, know that you will never know and you'll never get it unless you have tried and failed. So it's not going to come without you taking action. Get in the arena, dare greatly and try. Speaking about Daring Greatly, I am hosting my first in-person event this week, on Friday 26th of May. So I am super, super excited to help the coaches attending to really step into that arena and dare greater than they would ever do alone. So yeah, super excited. So if you're not able to attend this time, hopefully I will run another one maybe next year. So of course there are circumstances beyond our control We can't control other people and whether they buy our thing. We can't control the past because it's already done. However, as a coach, you know that there is so much more within your control than you maybe ever realized before you were a coach. So whether you allow yourself to procrastinate when building your website or whether you hear yourself making those excuses that you don't have time or blaming others for your lack of progress, All these things are within your control and it's easy for us to forget that and everything in that present experience is within our control, including our conscious thoughts. So that's where I really wanted to go next with this episode. And of course, there are many unconscious thoughts that we have all day long that we aren't even aware of. And this matters because our thoughts create our feelings and our feelings create our actions. So when I am asked the question, like, why am I not taking action? Why am I so scared? I just can't do this. It's often because of the way you feel and your beliefs that that stems from. So if you are taking action that you don't want to take, it's also because of the way you feel. So if you are stuck, not really playing as big as you wish to, then again, it's back to those feelings and the feelings you are avoiding that might come from playing bigger. So it's all about those feelings driving your actions. And of course, your actions will always create the results that you want or don't want in your life. So if your coaching business isn't where you want it to be, it's likely due to those thoughts leading to the feelings that result in procrastination and lack of action. And it happens to all of us. But it's why I spend so much time and money working with various practitioners on a really deep level. So I've been working with someone called Juliet recently who does emotional freedom technique and tons of other modalities. I think she calls it parts work. And it's really helped me to see that lots of the things happening now in my life and literally related to my business are due to patterns that started in childhood. I also work with Nick, an amazing MCC ICF coach who focuses on where is this coming from? So yeah, it's really important to go back to the root cause of many of these behaviors that may be not serving you anymore. So the next logical question is what determines what we think? Our thoughts and feelings are influenced by so many factors including our beliefs, past experiences, conditioning and all of the information we consume. So here are a few key factors that play a role so you can start to identify and really consciously create those thoughts. So firstly, our beliefs, which as a coach, we all know lots about limiting beliefs. So they shape our perception of the world and ourselves. I like to think of it as a stained glass window and you can be sitting in a church or something and depending on exactly where you're sitting, the room will look completely different and the sunshine shining through those windows will give you a different view of what's happening in that room than the person sitting next to you or the person sitting in front of you. So that always helps me think about those beliefs and how they can distort our view of the world if you don't believe that this is possible for you, for example. So challenging and evaluating these beliefs is going to really help you to create new possibilities and empower you to take the necessary steps forward. It always helps me to write them down because I don't think we can 
think our way out of a limiting belief. So it always helps to kind of get it down and then start to more rationally see our way through and obviously feel our way through is the ultimate solution here. So past experiences is the next thing you can reflect on, especially if those were challenging or traumatic. They will greatly impact your thoughts and emotions. I really noticed this with my clients and how their past experiences are holding them back, depending on the individual. So everybody I work with, I get to know so well and I really start to spot their patterns which may be from beliefs from experiences from all of these things we're covering so yeah think about your past experiences and if for example not wanting to speak up at school is still affecting you to this day because it genuinely does the next thing that you can reflect on and how this may be impacting on your thoughts is conditioning and society so your family history and being a woman carries lots of history with it that will impact on how we behave versus how men behave. So there is a lot that comes with our conditioning and society. The awareness is key. So the next one I really like, it's information and media, because the more information we consume, whether through the news, social media or other places, influence our thoughts and emotions greatly. So I, for example, rarely watch the news and rarely really scroll in Instagram or social media. You know, I just don't really do that much. I do sometimes create stuff, but I don't really consume very much at all. And actually, do you know what? That actually serves me really well because I think the few times I do, you just end up feeling depressed or worried. So yeah, I'm quite happy living in my little bubble. So think about what information and media you are consuming. The next one is self-talk. So that negative self-talk that we all have undermines our confidence and discourages action. So back to Brené Brown, who I continuously keep talking about, self-compassion and vulnerability is really key. In summary of today's episode, to help you overcome inaction and start taking steps towards your goals, become aware of the influencing factors that we've talked about and how they can help you to shift your thoughts and emotions. So things like journaling, self-reflection, mindset work, body work, seeking support from a coach or therapist, surrounding yourself with positive and a supportive community are so key. Change starts from within and consciously choosing those empowering thoughts and beliefs can really help you to actually thrive in your business. It's not just about the strategy, I would say 50% strategy, 50% inner work is required. So in this episode, we explored those factors. Firstly, our beliefs. Secondly, our past experiences. Thirdly, conditioning and society influences. Fourthly, information and media, and what you're consuming there. And lastly, self-talk and that inner dialogue that we all have with ourselves. So I really hope that this episode gives you some things to think about in a kind of structured framework way to really help you to get a handle on that negative voice that tells you you can't do this because, oh yes, you can. And like I say at the end of every episode, trust yourself, believe in yourself and be the wise gardener who keeps on watering the seed. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Women in the Coaching Arena. Please come and say hi to me on LinkedIn or Instagram and let me know how you are getting on in your coaching business and how you're going to go for your dreams this year. My name on LinkedIn is Joanna Lott and handle on Instagram is at Joanna Lott Coaching. And I'll also put links in the show notes below. Let me know if you found this episode useful, share it with a friend and leave me a review and I will personally thank you for that. Thank you so much for listening. Speak soon.